Welcome to the topic video, Git for Small Class and Small Projects. Our learning objectives here is to help reinforce why you'd want to use Git on small projects, apply Git to personal and class projects in various development scenarios, understand the purposes between local and remote repositories, and understand the difference between Git and GitHub. Okay, those are our learning objectives. Git is a version control system. Okay, these are also known as source code management systems. They allow you to track changes in your code over time, which means also being able to go back to any particular point or specific points in time to look at the code and see what it was like and to see the changes that have been made over time. Okay. In larger projects, version control is very important, very, very important in coordinating the work of multiple developers. Okay. But we're talking about using it on smaller projects. Okay. Version control and software version control is a huge topic with larger and larger projects needing to take into account uh, more and more issues about how you should manage the project with version control. Okay, we only need a minimum subset. Okay, and this minimal subset that we need for class is also beneficial to you on your own project. So that's what this is. This slide set is going to cover. We're going to have another slide set that covers specifically what you're going to do and how you're going to use it in this class. Okay. Software engineering classes should cover this topic in more depth, but they have a lot of different things to cover too in just a semester. Okay. Git has the following properties that make it good for personal projects and small projects. Git runs locally. Okay. Git runs locally. There's no need for network access to use it on your own projects. Okay, that's key. Okay. The other thing is Git works on a per project basis. Okay, there's no master server somewhere in the cloud that you have to access, nor even using it local is there one like master thing. Okay. You use it on a per project basis. Okay. There's no elaborate configuration needed to get started. Okay easy per project initialization and the other thing is git is completely free not only is it completely free the code is open source okay what could you do otherwise okay let's say you wanted to keep old copies of your work as you move forward uh well you can do what sometimes you might have done in the past is uh, before you made changes to an important file, you might make a backup copy with a special name. Maybe you're using the date as part of the, the name and maybe stash it in a special directory or something. The problem is this gets to be a lot of work to maintain. Okay, What happens when you have a lot of projects in your history and your project goes over time and you make a lot of different changes. That's what version control is going to help you do. Okay. Why for class assignments? Okay. Why do we need it for class assignments? Okay. Websites, web apps, and server programming projects tend to be composed of many files and subdirectories. Okay. So it's not just one file. Okay. It's not just one directory, it can be many directories. Okay, So we want to keep track of all those files and how they change over time. Okay, Our projects are going to extend over many weeks. We're going to have assignments every week, but we're going to have parts of those assignments that create a project, a website, okay. a static website, a dynamic website, a web app. Okay. You will not get those done in a single assignment. We will use version control to help us move forward a bit at a time. 
Learning management systems like Blackboard are not oriented towards multiple file assignment submissions. Okay, You can submit zips. They are very difficult for graders and other people to handle. And you can't tell changes. Okay. In addition, some of the file types that we use, particularly CSS and JavaScript files, are not permitted in many learning management systems and HTML files are restricted. Okay, so we need a relatively easy time stamped way, because this is how we'll tell that you turned in a project on time, and private way for you to share your work with the instructor graders. Okay. What are our minimal Git concepts? What do we need to get going? Okay. For sanity purposes, we always should put our project files, the files that we're using to build something, the files for an assignment, together in a directory. Okay. You can't have a gazillion files all spread out all over the place. We're going to organize things in directories. So you're going to start with a project directory. You're going to have one project directory that you're going to use throughout this course. Okay, That project directory can contain subdirectories to further organize your files. Git will be working with and within this project directory. Okay, So Git is organized by projects. Git is per project. And the concept we start with is the project directory. Okay, Git works with the project directory. It lives and keeps its files as a subdirectory within the project directory. Okay, so I've been working on this automated polling system that we've been trying out in class. This is what its project directory looks like. Here we see, I call it the CS. Computer Science Oriented Audience Response System. This is the master directory, okay, or the project directory. Within it, we see a bunch of subdirectories for different pieces. I've got samples of the questions that I send. I've got the client app, which is a React app. I've got a directory for the server, where I have all the server files. I have server testing files, etc. Okay. These little ticks are done by a little program that I use on Windows called uh, these check uh, called uh, Tortoise Git, which shows me the status that yes, there's no these are under version control and there's no um, changes in them. Otherwise, they would be shown as red. This dot Git directory is where Git will keep things for us. We don't touch that. Okay. Here's another example. Okay, this is, I have a ton of directories, project directories that I set up for different examples that I show in class. Async examples, client JS examples, CSS examples, etc. This is one where I keep all my React ex examples. Okay, each one of these directories is a separate project directory that I separately put under Git control. You can see the CSS layout directory is not under Git control yet. Okay, so you can do it on a per project basis. Okay, the repository storage for the entire file history. Okay, we'll talk about the Git repo. It can page the entire file history. What does that mean? We're going to learn we choose when we want to take a quote-unquote snapshot of our file history and preserve it. Okay? A project can have multiple repositories. Git will help you keep them aligned or synchronized. However, we don't want to make a mess of out of things. We're going to keep this real simple for us. Okay? This repository can be seen on the disk as a .git directory. See this dot git directory here that I'm highlighting? Note, on Windows and Mac OS and even Linux, when you're using a graphical user interface to look at your file system, things starting with dots 
are generally hidden. They're hidden files and folders. You need to enable and show hidden files or folders to see these things. Okay, they will not show up automatically. You have to. As a programmer, you want to see these things for your programming work. You also want to make sure it shows file extensions. For programmers, we want to see what kind of files they are and make sure they are the type of file we really want. Does it is it truly a .css or is it a .css .txt that we didn't understand because we have we aren't showing our file extensions fully. Okay. Working files. These are the files and directory directories that you directly modify. Okay, so back here. Index.html, index.js, package JSON, whatever these mean, index CSS. These are the ones, these are files that I'm gonna directly work on. Okay. I never touch anything in the dot git directory. So that dot git is where git stores things. So we're in our project directory. Within our project directory, there is the dot git directory that git will maintain for us. Okay. We never directly modified anything in the dot git directory. Okay. So this is our repo, you could say. We have ignored files. We're going to make sure we ignore certain types of files. And we have working files and directories. Okay. What do I mean by snapshots? So at a particular place in time, say we initially start out our work here, okay, we do something known in Git as a commit. Okay. That takes a snapshot in time of all the files in our projects or all the files we choose to look at or in not ignore of our projects over time we can do other commits as we see here we have a different version of file a we call it a just shown schematically here is a1 and a different version of file c okay we do a commit at this time Git will keep track of the fact that file A changed, file C changed, but B is the same. Okay. We determine when we want to do these check-ins. Okay. We call it checking in or committing or taking a snapshot. The command we use is called commit. Okay. At any time we commit, any of the times we commit, we can go back to. We can see our code at a previous time. Okay. So any time we commit, not arbitrary times, but any time we do a commit, we choose when we want to do a commit. Okay. So where is the history? Okay. All these snapshots are saved very efficiently in Git. All our code is done in text files, plain text files. So Git knows and understands that these are changes saves it very efficiently. Don't worry about doing lots of commits. Not in this class. You are allowed to commit as often as you like and it's recommended. Okay. The git repository is this directory.git. That's where the history is maintained in a compact encoded form that we don't have to worry about knowing unless you want to contribute to the Git open source project. Okay. We don't need to worry about the internals. Okay. We don't mess with that. We give Git commands and Git will apply updates to that. If you delete this directory, you will lose your entire history. There's nothing you can do to get it back. Unless, of course, you've got an off-site backup. But we won't get to that until we talk about remotes. Okay. So how do you work with Git? All right. Assuming things got initialized somehow, and we'll talk about initialization in a sec, you modify the files in your working directory. You stage the files. 
that you want to commit, okay, adding, okay, so you basically adding them to your quote unquote staging area, whatever that means. It's a conceptual thing, okay. Then you do a commit, okay, which takes the files as they are in the staging area and permanently stores the snapshot into that .git directory, into your history, okay. In addition, it does this in a secure way. Okay. It looks at all those files, does what's known as a secure hash, computes this secure hash that can't be impersonated, and records that to say this is what the state of the files were at that point that you did the commit. You can't try and go back and fake it or anything like that. It's secure. In addition, It'll timestamp the time you did that. Okay. So you get a secure hash that shows this was truly the state of your files at that point in time. And it will timestamp them. Okay. You'll do these with various commands. And there's a number of ways to do this. We'll get to that in a sec. Okay. So the workflow diagram is you work in your directory. Okay. Just like you'd normally do. This directory, though, is under Git. It's been initialized. Okay, we'll see how to do that. There's two ways. We'll stage. Okay, we'll do our work. Then prior to a commit, we'll choose the files we want to stage that we want to put in the commit. Then we'll do the commit. Okay. That's fairly simple. Okay. We can always ask Git about the status of our project, the files in our working directory. These files can be in the following states. They can be tracked, meaning Git really knows about them. They can be unmodified, modified, or staged to be committed, if they've been modified. You can have untracked files. Okay, These are anything in your working directory. You may have added a Added subdirectories, added files, etc. Okay, anything that was not in the last commit or snapshot, okay, and has not been staged, and or has not been ignored. There's certain files that we're going to be very important that we ignore later on because we're going to start using a lot of libraries when we get to React and our server side stuff. We don't need to track our somebody else's code. We'll see how we do that in another way. Okay. I haven't shown you the commands yet, and I'll show you some commands and how we use it from the command line. I have a whole separate video about doing that for small projects. However, for day-to-day -day operations, you may want to use a GUI, a GUI, a graphical user inter interface. Okay, because we want to be able to we want to be doing these staging commits. And pushing frequently and often. It's good practice to get used to. Unlike a commercial work project you might be on, we don't have any criteria of when you commit. You commit anytime you feel like it, which means anytime you want to save your work. Okay. So we want to make that easy to do. Most integrated development environments include some level of graphical Git support. PyCharm, Visual Studio Code, Atom have very good tools for doing basic Git operations. Okay. Extended operations, we still go back to the command line. Okay. There are other GUIs that are available separately. The only one that I can recommend and teach you a little bit about if you come by office hours is GitHub Desktop because it's cross-platform. So it was worthwhile for me to learn how to use that so I can show you how to use that. It's pretty nice. Okay. The other tool I use, which is Windows only, is Tortoise Git because that integrates nicely with uh, the file manager in Windows. Okay. If things get complicated and I have to go and do a Google, how do I get out of this mess? Generally good to go back to the command line. Okay, it's going to make sure we understand how to do a few things from the command line. There's so many options here. Okay, I can't pick the one for you. 
I can make recommendations, but I want you to make it easier for yourself to do the basic operations of staging, which in a GUI is as simple as looking, clicking or unclicking checkboxes um, and pressing a button and you get a little thing, okay, to do a commit. It's not hard, shouldn't it be hard, okay. Check your understanding. We'll review these during class. Okay, so we do not need, Git can work locally for our local projects. Oh, wait, how does that work? Okay. Well, well, sorry. Why do we need a remote? Okay, remote repositories are versions of your project that are hosted on the internet or network somewhere. Okay, you can have several of them, each of which generally is either read only or rewrite to you. Here's the kicker collaborating with others involves working with and managing remote repositories. Okay, that's why we're going to use a repository that's not strictly not sitting on your computer necessarily, or one that's available via the internet. Okay. Working with others involves using these remotes. Okay. And what you're going to be doing is, and the commands are like this, pushing and pulling data to and from a remote repository when you need to share work. Ah, that's how Git, so Git can work fine locally and you can use it to keep track of your personal projects without anything out in the cloud or in the network. However, when you want to work with others, you need a you need a repository, which we call a remote, that others can see, so you can share your work. Why do we need a remote for class? Okay. Well, why do we? In this class, you're not going to be working on project teams. You're going to be working individually. Okay. However, Via the remote repository, you're going to share your code with me and possibly a grader. Okay. These are going to be private remote repositories, not like a public open source project. It's only me, you, and the grader can see your repository. All assignments, projects, and exams will be submitted via this remote repository. It's secure and it's time stamped. Okay, so I know when you submitted your work. Okay. People might want try messing around with their clocks on their local computer to try and fool this thing and set back time. It will make a mess of working with remotes. So if things get all broken up, uh, I really wouldn't recommend trying to mess with time on your computer to try and... Okay. Who hosts a remote? Okay, anyone with a server on the internet can host a Git remote. Okay, can host host a remote, remote repository. What you need is some Git software. Okay, the basic Git server software. Okay, and some of this is can range from very minimal to super elaborate interfaces, okay, to extensive web-based GUIs with lots of other uh, features, okay, and uh, there's people that'll tell you how to run your own Git server, okay. I run a remote Git server. It's very crude looking. It's got a little bit of a GUI interface, okay. It's protected, so only uh, password protected. So only my customers and such can see it, but and you can see it doesn't have very fancy of a graphical user interface. But this is me running my Git remote Git server at git.grado.networking.com. If you wanted a nicer looking, if you want to host a nicer looking service yourself on your own server, there are open source projects with nice features. GitLab Community Edition. Gitea, Gogs, these are people that want to host a Git server, remote server, themselves on their own machines. Nobody else can touch it. 
but them and the people they give access to. Okay. So, Professor, what's GitHub? GitHub is a commercial company that offers free public repositories. Okay. Meaning they offer and give lots of storage space and services to open source public projects. These are not private. Everybody can see them. Okay. GitHub public repositories are used by some of the biggest and most popular open source projects. This is how GitHub got famous. Okay. Anyone can join and create free public repositories with a free GitHub account. Okay. They make their money by providing private repositories and services to individuals and organizations. As of um, this year, however, they let individuals have private repositories that they can share with up to five other people. So that's pretty good. If you're working on a small private little project to get yourself started with a couple of friends, you can get a private repository for free from GitHub that you can use. And if your project gets to be a go and you want to make it bigger, well, you can use the paid service and then create a big team and such like that. GitHub Classroom. GitHub, our commercial company, has a service called Classroom. Okay, And they gave us a grant to use their classroom service. What it does is it provides some mechanisms to make it easy to create a bunch of private repositories for all the students in my classes and share that with just the professor and the and greater TA. Okay. Underneath all this stuff is just a Git remote. We're not going to use all their fancy uh, features and stuff. We're going to be using them as a private remote repository that for you that is shared with me and the grader. Okay, if we get a grader. Okay. So that's what we're going to be using it for. So what's the network view? Here's you. Here's you on your local area network. Here's a little router that you're talking to for your Wi-Fi, and it also acts as a network address translation device, which you don't need to understand. Here's the internet, and then there's GitHub. Okay, so You're going to be working here on your local computer with your local repository, and out here is going to be your remote repository, private, that you own, running out on GitHub. Okay, So what you're going to be doing You'll be making local commits to your course repo. Okay. After you make a local commit, you'll be able to you will push those changes. And the command is actually git push up to your repo on GitHub. Okay. This is private. This is private. Me and the grader have access to your GitHub repo. We don't have access to your computer doesn't work that way. If you don't push, we don't see it. We can pull down your changes. Okay. When I grade the exams, I will pull down all people's exam branches and onto my machine and grade them there. Okay. Generally, when, when I do code review, I'll probably do the same thing. When we, when we do a homework inspection, we usually... Uh, quick homework grading, assignment grading, we usually just visit GitHub to your particular branch and we look through your files and read your readme. Oops. Okay. So there's going to be some basic commands. These are git commands. We're going to use clone to create our initial start. That's how we're going to get our, I've created, when you run those links, we'll get a remote repository, we'll bring it down to your machine, okay, you'll do work, then you'll do pushes to push the changes, uh, the changes back to the remote, and 
if for some reason somebody else does changes, like I help you on something, you can pull the changes back down. So those are extra commands for working with remotes. Okay. So the workflow, you modify files in your working directory on your local machine. Do not use the GUI up at, don't use the web interface at GitHub to modify or edit your files unless you really know what you're doing because you can get your two repositories out of sync and then you'll have to do a merge and I'm not teaching you that. Okay, that's Google time and you get to learn stuff that you probably don't need to deal with. So you're going to modify files in your local working directory. Okay, you're going to stage the files, you're going to do a commit, and then you're going to push your changes to the remote repo. Okay, by pushing those changes, you allow me to see them and the grader. So if you run into a problem and send me an email, I need help, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at your code in your remote repo. If you haven't pushed your changes, I can't help you because I can't see your code. Okay, so that, don't forget to push. Okay. One more thing. When you do that push, all your changes go to the remote repo. Okay, your remote repo will be synced with the, your local one on your computer. If your local computer crashes, you can get back all your work by just cloning again the remote repo onto a new machine or your machine after you've got it fixed or whatever. Okay? So this is an off-site remote backup. Okay? So it's very difficult for your dog to eat your homework if you had a dog or your cat spilled water all over your laptop and killed it, as long as you push, your work is going to be saved remotely. Okay. Branches. Branches. What if we want to do something else with our work, but keep our work and be able to go back to where we were before? Okay. We've been talking about working on our files, staging, committing those files, doing more work. What if we want to do something different with our files just to see, to try something new, okay? Or to fix something even while the rest of the code is being used by somebody else, okay? These are what they call different development lines, okay? The code is in production, it's being used, but somebody wants to do some enhancements. So you're going to start a feature branch or something like that, they'll call it. Okay, we're going to add some new features or whatever. Okay, we call these branches. Okay. Branching in Git is very inexpensive. It's, 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 it's just like a marker that keeps track of all those different commit points. Okay. They're very inexpensive computationally and storage-wise. Okay, this isn't true of all version control systems, but this is particularly true of Git. Okay, so we're going to use a new branch for each assignment. Okay. Okay. Now, for personal projects, or if you happen to be in charge of a a, a project yourself that's public, okay. When do I branch? I set up a new branch because I've messed up and need to start work from an old commit point. Okay, so that's after the fact. I've been working, 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 and thinking something's going to work. And my solution approach after a number of commits or other turns out that it's not good. So I want to go back before I started all those changes and take off from there. Or I'm about to venture in the, into the unknown. 
say I'm going to try a new library that's going to help me do something nice like drag and drop. Okay, and I don't know if I want to keep these changes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the thing to work or if it's a good library to use for my purposes. Okay, that, that's another thing. What you'll see in the classic literature, what you'll see in the literature about version control, they'll always talk about feature branches that you're going to work on for a project, for like something new you're going to add to a website, while the website's still being used, or they'll talk about bug fix branches. Okay, those are common things. But for my personal projects, this is how I use branching in addition to those notions of bug fix branches and feature branches. Okay, you can always add, delete, or rename branches. Okay, note that combining branches together requires something called a merge. We won't cover that here. The only way you'll have to deal with that is if you make changes directly to your GitHub repo and changes to your local repo and get them confused, and that will call for a merge. And as I said, don't make changes directly through GitHub's graphical user interface. Always do local work and pushes. Okay. There's references that'll teach you about this stuff. But we don't need it in this class or for personal projects. Okay. In this class, we're going to be building a website, web apps, and web server projects. Okay. We're going to be using good software engineering project practice and have a partially working project every week corresponding to our working assignments. Okay, so that means every week we're going to have some functionality that works. Okay, we're going to have other questions that are just part of a weekly assignment to reinforce what we've learned. Okay, each assignment will get a new branch, so you can build on what you have done and me or the grader will grade your work on the previous branch while you start working on the new assignment. Okay, So you'll be working on the new homework while we're still grading the old homework. And if we get behind on our grading, it doesn't matter because we can always go back to the branch of the previous homework or whatever homework that we're grading. Well, you could be two homeworks ahead of us and using some of the material that you used previously. Especially if you're doing web pages, we're gonna websites, we're gonna keep adding pages to make our websites more and more complicated. Or web apps, we're gonna be adding more components. Okay, so that's how we're gonna use branches in class. Okay, now for work and for class, branch names are gonna be given to you. Okay. You've got to follow the branch names exactly. And I mean exactly as far as upper and lower case. If I give you all lowercase letters, etc., whatever, it must be used. I've written a tool for me and the greater to you use that quickly goes to the proper branch in your repo so we can quickly evaluate it. If you have the wrong branch name, the wrong grade. Just like you will get screams and yells from your management if you check in with the wrong branch names and such like that. Okay. All commits get a secure hash and a timestamp. Okay. So we know when the work was committed, and we will, and hence we won't grade late work. Okay. We won't grade submissions that are submitted after the deadline. We can see the timestamp. Okay. You can keep, so we're not using uh, Blackboard for uh, submitting assignments. You submit just like you would on the job by doing commits and pushes. Just like on the job, you would have a deadline that you're supposed to make for your commit and push for your assignment. Okay. If it's in after the deadline, it doesn't get graded. Okay, so commit and push as often as you like after you get each problem or sub problem done because as much as you get done, we will grade. Okay, you may commit and push as often as you like. We do not, unlike maybe when you're working on a project, we do not put any limits to how often or when you can do that. 
Okay, you do not enforce any quality checks of your code on commits and pushes. Okay. Branch visualizer remarks. Okay, a couple extra remarks, and then we'll kind of try and show some things. Git works best with text files rather than binary files, so it can handle both. I take snapshot of my work rather frequently, okay? Especially after I've gotten something to work, okay? Hence, multiple times a day would not be unusual. When I'm writing up uh, homework solutions, okay, and I'm solving problems I haven't solved before, I, I typically commit after each problem or sub-problem that I finish, okay? That's the mechanisms I would use, okay? Let's get started. When working for a company or an open source project or a class project, or, or in this class, we start off by cloning a remote repository. Okay. This is the, okay. So this is what we're going to be doing, and this is what will be detailed in the Git for class slides. For personal projects that you may not you may not have to share, okay? You can just use git init in the project directory, okay? And this is explained, and I go through this and show you example, full examples with live coding in the personal git tutorial, okay? And the slide, and uh, the, and the video I made of this, okay? So those are two approaches for class, working on open source projects and working for a company, you'll start off by cloning a remote repository. Okay. So git commands. How do you actually use this thing? First of all, I said we use the command line. So let's take a look at the project directory that I was using for all the assignments, solutions from last spring. Okay. So here it is, examples, assignments, solutions, spring 2020. If I want to do stuff with the git command line, the first thing I need is a git command line at this directory. There's various ways to pull up terminals, command lines, whatever. On Windows, if you install Git for Windows, you may get something called a Git Bash. Okay. This, how you actually bring up this window, you may just come over and go Git Bash. Okay. Now. If I'm working with a project, I have to be in the project directory. Right here, if I look at what directory I'm in, print working directory, you can see I'm in someplace users Greg B. Okay, that isn't my project directory. What I need to be is in the directory, uh, print working directory, here. C, Greg, customers, CSU, blah, 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 blah. We have to be in the appropriate directory. Okay. Now, I've already initialized this because I started this off by cloning the repository just like that I set up, just like you will set up or have set up. Okay. So I'm not going to use git init. I'm going to, I can just type git status to check the status here. Okay. Your branch is up to date with origin homework. Five, untracked files, club project build. Okay, so Git is telling me things. Okay. What else can I find out? I can add files. I'm not going to modify files here. I can do commits by going git commit. All these commands require me being A 
show you that in a second. Require me being in the directory. Having my terminal in the directory of where my project is, my project folder. So that project folder concept is important. Okay. I can get a list of branches. Get branch. You can see, oh, I've got homework. I have branches for master, used for homework one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was going back in time to look at one in particular, homework five. Okay. I don't know why I was doing that. Okay. So we have these command line commands. Okay. We can use various things to commit. Various commands to check out and okay if I mess up a file I can recover etc these are explained and shown in detail in the personal git tutorial I mean sorry the uh, git for uh, small projects hands-on tutorial uh, I can view the history okay let's try that git log Okay, updated solution, clean up readme, added and styled the form for problem four. We can see this history here. Now, I will tell you that this history, though, is specific to the particular branch I'm on. Hence, you only see me talking about finishing problem. Two, finishing problem three, finishing problem four, okay. But what you don't see me talking about is the next homework, the next homework. Right now, this little GUI, I mean not GUI, but this command line tool gives me some information that, yeah, I'm sitting on homework five, okay. Branch. Okay, we will learn how to change branches as need be, okay. Now, what would a graphical tool show me? Okay. This is a graphical tool that comes with uh, Git when you install it. Okay. This is me viewing all those. This is a graphical tool viewing the entire project history, including all the branches. My initial commit, my first edit, okay, this is when I start homework two, you can see this is where homework two branch ends, okay, all the things, okay, finish problems one through four, okay, you can see here's homework, where homework uh, four starts, this is the branch showing you how far we got on four, homework four, you can see the entire history, all my multiple commits, okay, you can have a lot more commits than this if you like. Okay, let's look at one more example. Here is a lot more complicated example. This is for my computer science oriented audio audience response system. Okay, so this started off as a very exploratory. So, my first little bit of working web sockets learned to pulled out the proxy server stuff and the things like that, started working on JSON messages, started working on login, decided not to use a certain uh, library that I started using, went to the plain web sockets. Here I'm doing things like merging, okay? So this is showing a more complex history of a more complex project, okay? I was use, still my personal project, okay? This is where we see merging the branches come together and such like that. This is a way of looking at the history of the project. One other GUI tool, oops, let's finish all the slides, sorry. Fixing past goofs, working with branches. This is a summary of all those commands for working with the command line, okay? One last thing to show you, quick GUI view. 
So here's my project, okay, for the uh, app that we're using in class. You can see last change was just 19 hours ago. I fixed, I fixed a bug, okay. I'm gonna click my test. I fixed a bug, okay. Author samples, author uploads. We can see that some of these graphical tools show you exactly the changes. Okay, I added some extra lines here, such like that. That all that's really all it took to fix that crash. Okay, so the graphical tools do help. Okay, this is the GitHub desktop version. You don't necessarily need to use them all the time. Okay, and like I said, for a lot of things, uh, your IDEs, if you're using an editor, may have an extension or plugins to help you do this basic, sorry, the basic staging and committing operation so you don't have to use the command line. Okay.